What's up guys, it's Mr. B and today I'm going to show you how we can make a latching and jogging circuit work for our motor using the PLC. First, I'm going to create a latching circuit in my code which will allow the circuit to latch in the on position once you engage the start button. After that, then I'm going to implement jogging into my code which will allow you to make small incremental movements with the motor and move that motor a little bit at a time. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're back here at our circuit today and this is the same circuit that we had as last time uh, where we had the motor turn on. What I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna add a couple inputs and outputs to create a latching circuit and then I'm also gonna implement a jogging circuit. So let's go ahead and add some inputs. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring input one and I'm gonna set that as an emergency stop button. All right, and this is a maintain button and I already have the positive power on the other side to speed up the video a little bit, but it's a maintain button so it will uh, stay in the closed position and when you press it, it will stay in the open position. Next, I have input two already hooked up previously to the normally open start button. That's what we're gonna use. Input three, I'm gonna go ahead and bring that to a normally closed stop button. And then finally, I'm gonna go and bring input four, and I'm gonna bring that to a switch, a single pole, single throw switch, which we'll use in our uh, jogging circuit. So, I'm also gonna add an output today. I'm gonna add an output. I already did the positive and negative power, but we're gonna add a red light to output three. And we already have output one hooked up to the interposing relay, and output two hooked up to the green light. Next, we're gonna go ahead and since I added the emergency stop button to my DC circuit for my PLC for safety, I'm also gonna add it to my AC circuit for safety. So I'm gonna break this in series circuit that powers the coil and I'm gonna bring it to the emergency stop button first, then come down to that circuit which will close the plates on the interposing relay, which will then go to the coil to the contactor, which will power down to the motor and turn the motor on. So, I added those uh, both emergency stop buttons to the AC and the DC circuit for safety purposes. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go build this code and create a latching circuit. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna build our code to create a latching circuit to keep the motor on. First things first is I'm gonna make sure I go online and I have communication with my PLC. Then I'm gonna take what I have off the PLC, bring it back over to my computer, and then I will adjust code. Okay, here we are back at our code and we're gonna go ahead and create a circuit which latches the motor into the on position. So let's start with our safety portion, which was I1. And we have I1 hooked up to the emergency stop. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there as the E stop. I'm gonna go bring that to my next stop button, which was just the red normally closed button hooked up to I3. And we're just gonna put that in there as a normally closed button for a stop. All right, and then we're gonna go and move to I2. This was my normally open start. And when you, these will already be receiving a signal because they're normally closed buttons. So you'll be receiving a one here and a one here already. Signal will be going through both of those. It will stop here because this is a normally open button and you have to wait until that is pressed to pass through. And then it will go to Q1. Q1 is the interposing relay which will then close the plates to the power motor circuit. So this right here does not act as a latch. We need to create a latch so when you press this button, you can let go and then the motor will still be on. So right directly underneath that, I'm gonna put Q1 here as well. And the reason I'm doing that is because if you put Q1 right there, it's going to maintain the same signal as what Q1 is receiving here. And we're going to bring that in parallel to the start button. 
So now when you, this will have a signal of one, this will have a signal of one. This will be a zero. Once you press that start button, it'll receive a signal of one. Give a signal of one to your interposing relay, which will start your motor. And then if this is a one, this will just copy that. So this will be a one as well. Now, when you let go of this button, signal instead of going through here will come down here because this will maintain the one because that is the one as well. So that's why it will stay on. And the way you break that signal right here is by pressing either of these stop buttons. All right, so let's go down here. And just because I like to have lights indicate what is going on, when the motor is running, we're gonna go ahead and put on a green light, which is hooked up to output two. And when the motor is not running, so all I'm gonna do is invert that. When it is not running, it is going to turn on the red light, which is hooked up to Q3. And we can put in here red and we can put green right here. All right, so this is gonna be my latch and circuit. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna download this to my PLC and then we're gonna go test how it works. Okay, so we're back at our station. We downloaded our code to the PLC and we're gonna see how it works. The way we wrote the code is when you press this green button, it will latch, it will send power to the IR, which will close the plates, will send power to the coil and send power to the motor. And then the motor will turn on. When I let go of this button, there's also Q1 in parallel, which will hold that into the on position. And then either of these will work as stop buttons. So let's go ahead and press our start button and see if we can get that motor going. And then I'm gonna release this start button and see if it stays on. All right, so I press the button and I turn the motor on. But if you notice, I'm gonna let go of the button right now and it stayed on. And that's what we wanted. We wanted it to latch into the on position and work. Now we have both of these set up as stop buttons. So if I press the stop button, the motor should coast to a stop, which it did. And if you notice, the red light is on when it is in the stop position and the green light will turn on in the on position. I'm now gonna show you the emergency stop button. So latched in the on position, green light turned on and emergency stop button will shut the thing down as well. So we have both of those working. Like I said to you before, this will maintain the open position where this will not. So if I try to start it now, it won't work because that emergency stop button has to be released. So we can release that emergency stop button and then get the circuit to work again. All right, so now I need to wire a brake up to my motor in order to make it work as a jog. So first things first, we need to lock out our station. Okay, so now let's de-energize our circuit. Let's lock out for safety. And let's go ahead and put our lock on the circuit. Now what I'm gonna do is I have my brake right here. And the way I want this brake to work is I want it to work as a fail safe brake. As in when there is no power, there is a spring holding the brake into the on position. When I send it power, electromagnetism will pull the brake off. So I'm gonna steal power from the motor because I want it to be off when the motor is running. So if this has power, I want this to pull the brake off. So I'm stealing a 208 volts from the motor and I'm placing it into the brake. And then that way it will work as a fail safe. Now we're gonna go and create our code to make this work as a jogging circuit. Okay, so back at the code here, and this is the same stuff we set up before, but I'm gonna make a simple adjustment to it to make it work as a jogging circuit now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here and I need to add another line in, another section in here. This section that I'm gonna add is gonna be the switch that I previously wired up. So since I don't have enough room to do it in here, I'm gonna take this, bring it down, and I'm gonna add a marker in so we can have room. So let's go ahead and delete this item here. Delete this item here. And actually, let's just go ahead and 
make it simpler and delete that section. All right, so we're gonna have that go to a marker. This marker will just retain the stop button signal. So right now, as I told you before, they're receiving signals regardless because they're normally closed buttons. Uh, they will only not receive a signal if you press them to stop the circuit. Now I'm gonna come back down here and I'm just gonna take that signal. So it's my marker, I retained that bit and we're gonna use it later. And we're gonna go and do the same thing we did before where we go to I2, which was my start, nor my normally open start. And we will send that to Q1, just like we did before. But now underneath here, same as before, we're gonna have Q1, which is the latch and portion. But right here, what I wanna do is add a switch, that switch we put in there as I4. And I'm gonna call that my single pole, single throw switch. And we're gonna put that item in parallel to that start button. So it functions the same way as before, but the only difference is that we have this switch. And what that does is when I have that switch closed, it will act as the same way as we just did, as a run circuit. When I open this switch, I can no longer have my latch in contact engaged, which means now it will only work for the moment I press the button. So I can move the motor in small rotations as a jogging circuit. So let's download this and go back to our station and see how it works. Okay, so I downloaded that to my PLC and I have it in run mode. As you can see, my red light is on, which shows it in the stop position. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna leave my switch in the open position. And what that does is that makes this act as a jog. So what I'm gonna do when I press the button, it will make that motor rotate in small increments. So I will jog the motor. So watch how the motor moves as I press this button. If you notice, I can move the motor in small motions. It will only work as I press the button. So if I press and hold, the motor will stay on. If I press it and let go right away, it will inch the motor slowly. Now, what we had before is a run-in circuit, and that's the same way as if we just latch that switch on, now I4 is receiving that signal, and it'll allow that Q1 holding or latching contact to engage. Now watch as I press the button and release, the motor will stay on. So, depending on how you have the switch, depends on how the start button makes the circuit react. So that is how you can create your run circuit, and this is how you can have your jog circuit. So what I wanna do now is I wanna show you if you did not have this switch, how you can create a circuit to work in the same way by using your code. So let's go ahead and go back to our code and change it around. Okay, so this is the previous code we had before, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and delete this code because I want to show you how you can do that same function but without a switch. Let's first put in our I1, which was our emergency stop button. So we'll put that in as our e-stop. Then we will go and bring that in front of everything. So everything can be stopped by the e-stop. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my start button, so my normally open start button, and then I'll bring that to Q1 or output one. And output one is the interposing relay, so we'll put the IR here, but I'm also going to change this to a set function. And what that does is that will be my latch in function now. When I press this button, it will set Q1 to the on position. Next, I'm going to add I3. 
I3 was my normally closed stop button. So we're gonna put that in here as normally closed stop button. But we're gonna change that to not only function as a stop, I'm also going to want it to function as a jog. So we're gonna make this button have two functions here. I'm going to erase this because I want to put that in with the e stop in front of it for safety purposes. This will also go to Q1 as well. So it's kind of like an or. If either of these are done, it will set Q1 to the on position. So now I have to create some more code that makes this act not as a start, but makes it act as a jog slash stop. So let's go and I'm gonna bring this down two more. And on this line, I'm gonna put in my I3 again, which is my jog stop. And up here, I'm gonna make this a break. So this one functions the same as that one, just so the motor doesn't get set immediately. So both of these, since this is a normally closed, we'll make it a break. And since this is normally open, we'll make it a make. So that way neither of them are receiving a signal until they're pressed. But down here, I'm gonna make I3 as a make, which means it will be receiving a signal. And what that will do is we're gonna bring that to a marker. Now, instead of having this marker as a contactor, I'm gonna put this marker as a Ryzen edge. And the way that's gonna work is when it's getting a signal, it's gonna go ahead and bring a signal over here, but it will pulse a signal. So when it gets one signal, it will change this to a one for one pulse and then back to a zero. And then this will maintain the zero after it receives that pulse of one. So it will only work for a pulse. Then after that, I'm gonna go and use that marker signal. So whatever that signal is, I want it to go to here. And I'm going to send that to Q1, the interposing relay, but I'm gonna change this to a reset, which will reset the interposing relay every time that it receives a signal here. And what that does is when you press this, this will now function as a stop and a jog instead of a run mode. And you'll see that when we show you with the circuit. The last thing I'm gonna add is I1, which is the E stop, but I'm gonna go ahead and invert it and send that to Q1, and I'm gonna make that a reset as well. So this will also reset that coil back to zero. So let's go download this and see if we can get this to work the same way as a jogging circuit without the switch. Okay, so I downloaded my code to my PLC and all I'm really using in this circuit is the green button, which is the input two as my run and then my normally close button as input three as my stop slash jog and then Input one is the emergency button, which will kill the whole circuit if I need it stopped. So I'm gonna press this and you should notice it will work as a run because it set the circuit to one. So it latched the circuit on and it made it a one, which allows it to stay on because it is a set output one. I have this set up to where when you press this, it will reset if you just press and release. But I also have it set up that with that Ryzen edge pulse, that when you press it, it will receive the signal as you press it. So now this can function as a stop, but also function as a jog. So remember, this one will be my run. This is a stop and a jog. So if I press it and release, it will reset that circuit back to zero and stop the circuit. And then we also added that e-stop into this one as well. So the e-stop will reset the circuit too. All right, guys. Well, today we created that latching circuit to start. I showed you how it worked and we made the motor move in the on position continuously. Then we went back and added that jogging portion to our code and we made small incremental movements. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.